Well, I think everybody's pretty much familiar with uh, George Washington crossing the Delaware and capturing the Hessians, the Hessians who were allied or mercenaries for the British during the American Revolution of 1776, and he captured them on uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day in a surprise attack. But what most people don't realize is that the Hessians actually were very wary of the um, colonist army being a lot stronger than estimated by, you know, traditionally estimated in the past. And um, they were also wary of many attacks that were going on. So, like, some, but you'll see the official story was, you know, uh, soldiers agree not to fight in the winter. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. It's very hard to go through the snow, and the clothing doesn't protect from the cold. The British were joyful to for their victories and celebrated on Christmas. At the same time, uh, the Patriots were planning a surprise attack on the British. That's kind of like the textbook, um, you know, school book, you know, story of how it went down. But that's not exactly true. They did they did catch the Hessians by surprise. But it was under the most extreme circumstances. Um, so, just to give you a little background, the citizens of New Jersey, which there were far different citizens in New Jersey back in 1776 than they are today, uh, the, the citizens back in, New, in 1776 were they wouldn't put up with a lot of garbage. <laughs> so, they be, the citizens of New Jersey immediately began uprising, harassing the occupiers, the British occupiers, in every way that they could. The small towns were easy enough for the British to garrison to control because the, the Americans abandoned all the small towns. They had already been evacuated by the American citizens when the British arrived, so British garrisoned them, and it was no big deal. But the thing is, when the British soldiers go out foraging expeditions and re reconnaissance missions with dispatches to other posts, post, they would be attacked by New Jersey militia anywhere along the highways and byways. British casualties quickly began to mount. So the British were very much on guard in the wintertime because they knew the colonists were not, the revolution wasn't put down by any means. Uh, they were constantly also awakened by rumors, alarms, and attacks to the point that they were tired, scared, and worn out. Morale was, you know, the British were getting worn out from constantly being harassed by the Americans. Their, the British morale was extremely low, and this is including the Hessians who were, um, you know, the mercenaries that were hired by the British. Now, the Hessians were very professional. They were Germans, right? They are very professional soldiers. They weren't, you know, the, uh, sometimes, you know, people get the impression because they were mercenaries, they were not really caring too much about putting that much effort into the battle. That's not true at all. Um, so, so at the time, Colonel Rao re, uh, received news on the 25th from two deserters um, that, uh, you know, the American deserters, right, and from a spy in the American camp that Washington was planning an attack on Trenton early in the morning on the 26th. So, you know, Ralph could hardly believe it because he considered Washington's army to be defeated. But the recent ha harassment in the countryside, you know, proved that, hey, you know, maybe something's up. So... You know, Washington crossed the Delaware, right? And he surprises the, the uh, Hessians at Trenton, okay? Now, I know, you know, they kind of like make it sound like the Hessians were just lazy. No, they weren't. They weren't. That was the whole thing. And, you know, this idealistic picture of Washington crossing the Delaware wasn't exactly like this. But, you know, it's a painting, you know, with the flag and all that. Whatever, you know, it's just, mm. <laughs> but, you know, that's the concept anyway. But, it, you know, I could, couldn't imagine it being exactly like that. But, you know, it wasn't it wasn't easy to get across the Delaware. As a matter of fact, if you look today, you know, the weather back then was a lot colder um, than it is today. There was rivers that were totally frozen over that they were bringing artillery across. You know, there was a much colder climate back in 1776. Even in the 1600s in Jamestown, you know, they talk about the severe winter in Jamestown, Virginia. You're thinking, why, why, what? And along the coast there? No, that's because it was a lot colder back then. I don't know, maybe we're going getting into that again. So contrary to the commonly held viewpoint that the Hessians' garrison at Trenton was drunk on Christmas Eve and therefore unprepared for Washington's attack, the Rowell, currently, you know, the, the, Rowell, the, the one that was in charge of the Hessians, were on a high state of alarm all day on the 25th, preparing 
preparing and waiting for an American attack. Attack. They 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 got a spy that said it was going to happen, and uh, you know, it was like they, there was different ways they found out. I mean, it was like it was a spy, and um, there was also um, from from two deserters that there was going to be an attack, and also there was all the recent harassment in the countryside that the Americans were still a potent force. So they, the Hessians were extremely well on alert. What happened, though, where they really lucked out, the Americans lucked out, there was a severe snowstorm starting in the evening that was so bad that the Hessians began to relax. There was no way an army could march through that snow. That's how, if that snowstorm didn't happen, the, the uh, Washington probably would have never freaking succeeded in doing this because the Hessians were on high alert. They already knew that Washington was going to attack, or they had word. They didn't quite believe it, but they said, let's be on guard. Um, so they went to bed. They went to sleep. They went to sleep, and they got surrounded in mass early the next morning on the 26th. So nearly a 1,000 of them got captured and all that stuff. So, so that's really what happened. So, you know, the moral of the story is don't ever let your guard down. I mean, if you got word something's going to happen, hey, don't, you know, if you think the odds are impossible or whatever the hell it is, don't let your guard down. That's really what it is. I mean, they were tired. The morale was low. It was Christmas time. You know, they're thinking, how can any army get through this snow? Forget it. No way. They did. They got through it. You know, the, of course, you know, there's no uh, on the scene photographers back in 1776, you know, when um, the war between the states was the first time he really started seeing photography in an American war, but, um, you know, the paintings are a little bit, uh, you know, they, they more or less glorify things and don't exactly picture it exactly correctly. You know, you really got to read what happened. And, you know, there's a lot of people that were hedging their bets back during the, Med uh, the American Revolution. You know, people would say, you know, they were loyalists one time and they were not a loyalist. But the other side of it, they really what got them going was not just the taxes, but the gun control. Now, if you look today, what's going on, maybe that's going to happen. I don't know. Our wonderful, uh, you know, <laughs> I should say this as a sideline. I'm going to probably put a video out on it later about the National Rifle Association. I call them the National Regulatory Agency. <laughs> They're that bad. You know, if they had an, if they had that stuff back then, we'd, we probably would have lost. I belong in a GOA lifetime. NRA, I'm like, nah. Anyway, but, um, you know, really what got the revolution going, what really destroyed it, broke the camel's back, where the people really started getting pissed off, was the um, uh, gun confiscation. And then there was, you know, deaths of Americans. Then the whole thing just, mm, that was it. It was taxes was like starting it to happen, you know, starting things to happen. But once they went for the guns, that was it. They were done. And, you know, if you look at the Second Amendment, it really says it's supposed to be like, you know, Switzerland or Israel, where the entire nation is the army. You know, it's the self-defense force. You know, the IDF or the Swiss, the Swiss army. You know, people keep the, you know, regular military weapon at home. That's what they do, you know. Anyway, that's what it's supposed to mean, really. Not not even semi-automatics and stuff, for crying out loud. It's not even that. Believe it or not. I mean, I look, I mean, I got another video on it. If you look back, I'll probably post it to the end of this. And you can look back. But, you know, the, the thing is, you know, never let your guard down. Never let your guard down. I mean, if you got word that, you know, recon says this, and you're thinking, ah, oh, that can't happen, you know. The Hessians were professional soldiers. They really knew what the hell they were doing. They were not lazy. They were not a bunch of drunks. They, you know, they wanted, they, you know, they, they, they had a keen sense of, uh, you know, mission to survive. I mean, sure, they were being paid, but that doesn't mean they weren't really, they didn't know their stuff or they weren't motivated to win, you know, because, you know, it's like a do or die situation. You, either I win or you win, right? So that's how that works. So they were motivated to win. The thing is, you know, they never expected, you know, how is this army going to go through a severe snowstorm on Christmas Day? And that's what Washington did. That good thing that snowstorm happened because it wouldn't have played out that was this way. Because the Hessians would have still been on high alert. They, that was what surprised them. It was a, a stroke of fate, a stroke of luck there 
you know, because the, the Hessians had word from um, a spy, plus two American deserters, plus the common sense that the Americans were still harassing, you know, the British uh, recon missions and stuff and foraging missions. And, you know, even if they, uh, they had to send a letter out to someplace, they needed like 20 people to guard the, the communication to get the communication through just a short distance because that's how much harassment they were getting from, you know, the Americans in New Jersey at the time, which tells you, you know, hey, you know, maybe it's true. They would have attacked on the 25th or 26th. Well, of December, right, Christmas, and um, you know what let let their guard down again was the fact that there was a very very severe snowstorm. <laughs> that tells you, man, you know, never let your guard down. And actually, this applies to anything. This applies to promises politicians make too. Uh huh. Remember this. Remember this. Remember this golden rule. This is like the number one rule. You got to have the backup to the backup to the backup and verify, 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 and show me, show me, show me. I want to see the results. I don't want to hear any BS. Right? It applies to everything. So, lesson learned. And uh, I'll actually put something on about the, um, you know, something else I did during this time period in Massachusetts when the revolt was going on. I did mention that, uh, you know, what, you know, why they had it, you know, because it's kind of weird, you know. Some people fall back here. Well, the Second Amendment says, well, you know what? It's supposed there was no Second Amendment. What are you going to do then? How come the Second Amendment, how did it come about? Mm -hmm. What does it really mean? You know, if you look back at American history, you'll understand what it really, really means. Mm -hmm. A lot more than sporting purposes, that's for sure. Anyway, over and out. Have a nice day and Merry, Merry Christmas.